Um, all right, call the meeting to order. And is there public comment for items not on the agenda? Okay. And additions or changes to the agenda. Denise? Um, yes, Fletcher. Just the reason I'm here is just to ask, um, I don't know if it's appropriate to ask now, but with Governor Scott's uh, lifting of all restrictions, does that, uh, can I ask about the use of the town hall or the town office for um, commission? Yeah, I mean, he just barely did that today. So we haven't even had the chance to digest it yet and figure out where we go next. Um, we're planning to review the town hall usage policy, which is different than using it for weddings and concerts and things like that on June 28th. Um, and I haven't even had a chance to check in with the office staff about using the office yet, but I will. So we have a cemetery commission meeting next Wednesday, a week from this Wednesday. And it's with him saying that we can gather indoors and everything. I'm just hoping that we can just get a key and go back to meeting as we always have, because these Zoom meetings are not easy for the cemetery commission. I don't yeah. need to go into any further detail on that, no, but they're not no. easy. For us. No, I get that. Um, all right, let me check with um, Judy. Like I said, he just barely did that today, so I haven't even had a chance yeah. to Supposed think to about it much. Effective as of midnight tonight. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, all we did in the past was just take a key and open up the door and there wasn't, it didn't involve any staff of the right. town governance at all. So, We'd like to be able yep. to do that next week if we can. Yeah, I remember the good old days. I'll check in with Judy and get back to you. Does that sound like a good plan? Sounds like a plan. All right. And with that, I'll say good night. Oh, you're not going to stay for the entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess not. Oh, we're, come on. We're trying to we're trying to wake the dead tonight. Yeah. Um, All right. I'll read about it in the paper. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Fletcher. I'll get yeah. back to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye bye. Yeah. All right, um, we will do the treasurer delinquent tax collector report um, on June 28th. So let's get started on the rest of the agenda. We have um, the letter to of intent to participate in the municipal roads grant and aid program that we need to sign. Um, and it has to be done and signed and back to, I checked because I wasn't sure, Toby didn't say where you send this form back to, but you send it back to, even though it's to do with roads, we send it back to um, CDRPC. Does anybody have any questions on that grant and aid program or would you like to uh, make a motion to approve? I would, I would move, I would make a motion to approve. Okay, is there a second? I can't hear you, Cliff. Sorry about that. The, normally I use the space bar to unmute, but for some reason that's not working tonight. Oh. Um, yeah, I would second it, but I would also like to propose a friendly amendment that uh, we approve it and authorize, uh, I guess, Denise to sign it on behalf of the select board. Is the signature line asks for a duly authorized representative? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that friendly okay. amendment is accepted too. All right. Are you ready to vote? Cliff? Aye. I'm an aye. Rick? Aye. All right. Next up, loose road. That um, I believe is, is it one culvert or two culverts, Alfred? Uh, it's one large culvert. Okay. Um, kind of the same. Same deal, we, we knew we had applied for this grant. Um, it's a structures grant and it's on a class class two highway. Yes. It, okay. Um, and it is loose road, 48 inch to a 60 inch culvert. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a 60 inch now. But it's going to be larger. Oh, I it's thought a big, it was. It's a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. We're waiting on a hydraulic study 
Yeah. That, that will determine the the final size of it. Okay. But this is just approving the grant that yeah. will that will accept the. Sure. That's. Okay, would somebody like to make a motion to approve? If there's no further questions. I will. I I I I I I'll make that motion. So moved. Okay. I'll second. All right. And would you like me to sign? Yes. Yeah, can, can we I, give? I certainly uh, authorize Denise to sign on behalf of the select board. If yeah, I will. Accepts the amendment. I accept that friendly amendment. All right. Are you ready to vote? Um, Cliff? Aye. I'm an aye. Rick? Aye. All right. Lightning Ridge Road, Alfred, that's to repave the paved part, right? Not anything yeah. else? No, it's just from Route 14 to the school. It's resurfacing the pavement. Just that short section of asphalt. Yeah. yeah. How, how, mm -hmm. That's not even a mile, is it? It's 1,700, 1700 feet. Yeah. Okay. And this is considered a, what is this? This is a class two roadway project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm just looking to see. Alfred, what's, what the, what's the rough, what's the rough? Repage. What's the cycle on that asphalt? How often do you have to resurface that? Is that fairly stable? Uh, it's it's seven or eight years generally. That's not bad for that. No. Depending on right, depending on condition. And the last time we paved that, we put in fabric and yeah. you know Drained. we chewed, chewed and ground it all up, put in fabric and new gravel under it. So so you've got a decent sub base in it. Yeah. Correct. And drainage. Yeah. Yeah. So this time I, we can just we can just uh, you know top coat it and yeah, it you're, you're just grinding surfacing it and yeah sure. and there is one there is one culvert that we may have to replace um, but that will also be included in the grant and paid okay. for by the, paid for by the grant yeah and this grant is eighty percent eligible for state costs yeah. and is is the rest of the work in kind um it can be yes it yeah. is okay uh typically All right usually usually on paving it's not though because um because we don't have paving equipment we just hire a contractor to do that okay mm -hmm. um but we might be able to get some of our in kind by changing the culvert okay you know, be good. we'll do the culvert and we'll change the culvert ourselves yeah okay all right. Any further questions? And are you ready to? Um, well, I, I want to object to unkind work. We need to be kinder. <laughs> no <laughs> unkind. Funny, only, <laughs> only in kind. Unkind. All, all, all road work is kind work, right, Don? I want the record to reflect. I only support kind road work. Okay. All kind. All, all kinds of road work. Yes. Okay. All kinds of road work needs to be kind. All right. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve this grant agreement and somebody to sign? So moved. Is there a second? Cliff still can't. Yes, yeah. John. Okay. Second. Would you like to authorize me or someone to sign this? Yeah. Yes. Do that. Friendly amendment. Casey Victor, as you can see, we're we're very uh, practiced at this, very skilled. We've got it down to a fine science. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I would sign on behalf of the board. And are you ready to vote? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Aye. I'm an aye. Rick? Aye. John? Yes. And I'm an aye. Aye. All right, that takes care of those. Um, next up, and my goodness, we are five minutes or so ahead of schedule. Good thing you guys tuned in early. Yeah. Do you, you run a tight ship? Yeah, we do. All right, so we originally um, had this on our agenda. I think it was our last meeting in 
May maybe. And there were some questions um, concerning site distance. So Alfred, I think you met with Alfred on site or I know Alfred was there. You yes. give, Alfred, do you wanna give us an update? Uh, yeah, I, I met with Victor there and we talked about the concerns that I put forward to you. And we looked into how we could remedy those concerns. And we came up with moving the, the curb cut like 20 feet to the south, which got us a little bit further away from that high point of the road. Mm -hmm. yep. And also we talked about clearing some brush and trees uh, to allow for better sight distance. And that has already been done. Okay, now the trees that were removed, they were in the town's right of way? Uh, yeah, I suppose they were. I didn't really look at that. It's certainly on Victor's property. Okay, so I'm just wondering if they were in the town's right of way, if you contacted well, was, the tree warden. They were small trees. Well, the town didn't do it. He did it. The, the property owner did it himself. Okay. So he he has full right to cut any tree that he wants as far as on his property. So we were concerned the last time that we didn't have, is it 200 feet site distance? It, it calls for 300 feet. Okay, and have you achieved that goal? Yes, yes, and then some. Yes. Okay, that's good. Um, and does it, I can't remember when we talked before, does it need a culvert? Yes, yes, it's a 15 inch diameter culvert. And the, the property owner is responsible for purchasing the culvert? That's correct. And the crew installs it or do they have to get somebody to install it? Uh, no, they'll have they'll have a contractor there to put the road in, so they'll they'll do the culvert at the same time. Okay, so they purchased they purchased the culvert from the town. Uh, no, 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 no. Not on a not on a new curb cut. Oh, okay. No. All right. <clears throat> so the the contractor will install and purchase the culvert. Correct. Understood. Okay. Any anything else, Alfred? And then I'll give Victor and Tracy a chance to say whatever. Uh, no, I, 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 the site distance is covered and the culvert, and I think it's I think it's a safe situation. Okay. So, no, in other words, it's good to go, right? Yes. Okay. Board yeah. members, board members, do you have any questions of Alfred on this? Yes, yeah, that does that just are using the B seventy one as a design standard on that for residential? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the B seventy one standards is yeah. typical, right? Yeah, that's for yeah. I mean that's residential. that's standard for every new curb cut. Yeah, it's the Vermont standard. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anybody else have a question for Alfred or Tracy and Victor? Do you have anything you want to add? Well, I, I just wish to uh, apologize for our absence last time. We were quite embarrassed to realize uh, at 7 or 6 p.m., I forget which the previous meeting was, but we were on the property in Callis and we looked at each other in horror and said, oh my goodness, we've missed the, the Zoom meeting. We, so, were, we were actually visiting with the Flower family on oh. the County Road. <laughs> No worries. No Their no children worries were regaling us with many tales. No, no worries. No. You don't get a black mark. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. But I, I am grateful to uh, Mr. Larrabee for meeting with me. And, and it, it certainly uh, was important for us to make sure that we have a, a safe exit and entrance off Jack Hill Road, despite the fact that when we're there, it, it we almost never see cars. It's a, it's a nice uh, it's a nice feeling to live or to be in such a, a quiet place in in Calais. Yeah, and it's a beautiful road. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. All thanks right. For, thanks for working with us, Don. Yeah, we appreciate it. Cool. Um, 
there's a picnic table up there. You're welcome. Anybody's welcome to go up and sit and enjoy the peace and quiet. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Thank you very much. Um, would somebody like to I'll, make I'll a make motion, motion to, to accept that to accept the uh, the curb cut application? The revise. Yeah, revise. Yeah. Okay, and the following conditions I have is that the curb cut was moved 20 feet to the south. Brush will be kept cleared. Small trees have been cleared. So we have an improved site distance to meet the 300 feet necessary. A contractor will install a 15 foot, 15 inch culvert and B71 standards have been followed. So it's, I guess I will, would somebody make a motion. Yeah, I'm so moved. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. Um, would you like to take a vote? Cliff? Aye. I'm an I. Rick? Aye. And John? Yes. All righty. We are just moving right along <laughs> here. Amazing. Hi, Ruby. Thank Come here, Rubes. Thank you. Um, i working with that one now. All right. Anything? Anything else, Alfred? Uh, no, no, not on this issue. Okay, because we're going to move on to other things. Unless you had anything else, quick. With with that, I, I think Tracy and I will sign off. Uh, I I've been up since four, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel for you. Go sleep. Probably Alfred does too. Yeah. Yes, yes, I can relate for sure. Yeah, sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank, thanks for what all of you do serving the town. And I look forward to meeting you in person. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I was just going to say that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Okay. See you, Tracy, Victor. Bye. Hi. Right. Thanks, Alfred. You're welcome. Um, okay, I didn't have I didn't have anything else on the agenda that you asked me to put on, Alfred. So is there some, is there anything else? Yeah. Well, it's it's just a quick question that kind of follows up from from Fletcher Dean's uh, with the restrictions lifted. Can I, uh, can I stop taking temperatures of the guys every day and whatnot or? I think, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what Fletcher's saying. The governor just barely lifted those restrictions today. I don't think the board has even had a chance to even think about it. Okay. Um, but I know that all those other restrictions have been lifted. Except, in, except, I was just listening to the news for a minute that the restrictions are still in place, like in hospitals. But obviously, the town garage is not a hospital. Right. Um, other board members, it's not on the agenda, so I'm not sure how I feel about making a decision. But what are your thoughts? Have have, have what's the inoculation on the crew? Have they all been? Have they that's, had the... that's not really something we can ask. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. Sorry about that. Yep. Uh, Alfie, do, do you still have uh, non-crew members coming into the building periodically? Uh, just the salesman very periodically. I mean, if the salesman pops in or something, but that's really about it. Well, I'm guessing you would prefer if a salesman pops in that you make them wear a mask and get the temperature taken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I can't take their temperature, but I can I can certainly ask them to wear a mask. And we okay. still I mean yep. we still I still have the signs up saying okay. mask okay. required, but um I just and I I can do it for another week if you want. I just, you know, yeah. it's just it's a burden burden, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. do you know how the do you know what the atmosphere is with the crew? As far as the- As far as masks and all that stuff? Oh, we're still wearing masks. We're still all doing that. Um, yeah, I, well, I, wonder, I just wonder how comfortable they would all be is I guess my question. Right, right. Well, this is sort of brand new, so I haven't really felt them yeah. out. I just was taking the opportunity to ask your, your opinion yeah. before, I, before I do anything, but- uh, I think we need to, because this was such a huge issue, this COVID um, pandemic, I, I think it really needs to be something that's put on an agenda and we have a regular discussion and officially document what our decision is. Does that, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Cliff? 
I, I would add to that that a lot of these um, restrictions or requirements that we've been we have put into place were based upon input from the town health officer. So right. We should uh, allow him an opportunity to weigh in as well. Yeah. Let's see, Katie. Can you make a note for the minutes that we need to invite? the town health officer to our next meeting to talk. It would be good to also have him there um, as we're talking about the usage policy because maybe the restriction, there won't need to be any restrictions in the policy when we use the town office and the town hall for meetings. So yeah, it's unfortunate that we just found this out today and don't have time to, and can't really add it to the agenda tonight. Does that make sense, board members? Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Hey, that sounds good. Okay. I just want to make yeah, sure we do it the I right way so we don't have any repercussions. Um, okay, anything else, Alfred? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Things are, things are rolling along smoothly. I'm sure you got a lot of road work to do. Yeah. 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 Um, how is the roadside mowing going? Uh, it's it's going, but it's it's kind of slow. I'm, I mean, because I haven't found somebody that wants to operate it yet. So I'm yeah. take, taking a man from my crew to do it. And yeah, you know, this is a time of year when guys are taking vacation time, and yeah, you know, there's a lot going on. So it's I'm working on it for sure. Yeah. But it just uh it's a juggling act right you don't, you don't it, it control is. all yeah it's all right if you don't control all the variables on this one so. yeah um yeah. and is is ed on board to do mowing at the curtis pond town office that stuff uh he has been mowing it okay good um i guess i guess there might have been a misunderstanding about the town hall because i thought he was mowing at least the part in the front i think he is Mm, well, it needs it again. I looked at it today, and it's it's needs it. So I'll I'll have a conversation with him and make sure that he's at least doing that front. But I think the discussion that came up was related more to in the back. Right. Or, I did I did have a brief discussion conversation with Jamie, Edible Garden. Um. So I've got to put that on a upcoming agenda as well. Yeah, yeah, but certainly as front as far as in front of the town hall, that little median there, yeah. uh, that can be mowed, you know, with the same equipment that we use for the town hall and paying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, but yeah, I will. I'll have a conversation with that and see what uh, what his schedule is for that. But I know he's been mowing the town town office and the swimming area. Yeah, I did see one invoice from him in one of the sets of orders. Yeah, and I've yep. got another one on my desk that I will put on an order very soon. Um, okay. But I know yeah, he's mowing, mowing it. Yeah, that reminds me. Don't forget the end of the fiscal year is coming up. Yeah, yeah, I've got a bunch of them. I'm going to work on that tomorrow. Uh, okay. To get, I'll have at least two orders to put in. Um. So yeah, I'll get I'll get all I can on there. All right. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Alfred. All right. Okay. I guess we'll move on. Right. Um, Washington County Sheriff's contract. This is for FY 22 and the amount we budgeted for in the FY 22 budget is $4,000. Um, their rates did go up. I think the, I don't remember. Oh, it, it went to thirty dollars and seventy five cents um and the mileage rate remains at point six two five so this is this our standard contract with our very responsive sheriffs um I have to say they're really great to work with they're very um responsive and helpful How many hours are they willing to give us a week? Well, you know, it it's four thousand dollars, and it is thirty dollars and seventy five cents. Um, so let me turn on my calculator here. Do, do we back 
do we back into that four thousand dollar number by virtue of that's all the hours they're willing to give us at thirty dollars, or is that just the number we set and then we they fit their hours into that? We that's the number we set because that's what we can afford. It comes out to like a hundred and oh, maybe I did this wrong. Let me get my calculator back out. Well, okay, so four thousand dollars divided by an hourly rate of thirty dollars and seventy five cents comes out to. 130 hours a fiscal year. We we used to get we used to get some money back on tickets, and I think we still do get some, but it isn't as much as we used to. Does that sort of answer your question, John? So what, I'm just not remembering. Was that in our select board budget? Yeah, yeah. For the upcoming year, at it's 4, on. Okay. It is on page, I just looked it up tonight. It is on, on page, oh, it doesn't appear to be page numbers here. But anyways, it's under police patrol. It includes the constable stipend, sheriff's patrol, East Callis Street Lights, but it's in the budget for FY22 for $4,000. Okay, thanks, Denise. Yep. Okay, would somebody like to make a motion to approve the contract and authorize someone to sign it? Uh, <clears throat> so I'll make that motion and I will, and uh, I, Put in to authorize Denise to sign that and to representing the board. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. John will second it. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion or questions? What in that is that is that a total labor cost or do we do we rent? Uh, do they sometimes provide us with things like uh, speed carts? The or anything like that that gets built against that, or is that is that total labor? Yeah, there's no, a clause just... in there um, that says they charge us for uh, extra services and special equipment and whatnot if we ever do need to do something like that. Right. And if we ever needed them to do us. like traffic control or something like that, they would charge right. us extra. I was just wondering if that was again, and that's all against the four thousand budget. If I just wondered if they did uh, any of the, you know, this the speed carts that we put out to for we we own we own that speed cart rick okay yeah. sometimes the sheriffs own those and some that's why and they so I, I wasn't sure about that yeah thank you okay you're ready to vote or is there any other questions All right um cliff hi i'm an i rick hi and john yes all right, Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department. Hi, Chance. Hi, Chance. Hey, guys, how you doing? Good. How are right. things over in Woodbury? Slow, exactly the way we like them. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good thing, right? Um, so this is our contract for FY22 Fire Protection Services, and thank you for rearranging the dates of billing so that it it works better for us and probably for Woodbury too. Yeah, they've they've been taking it on the on the short side because they're Woodbury, so uh, they've been paying us right on July first. But we're finally in a position where we could push everybody out to January to make it easier for both towns. So yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. I didn't know. Oh, thank you. Um, and there's no changes in the contract. Nope. The only so, changes are the dollar amounts that were reflected in the budget that we uh, sent in to get approved. Yep. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Chance? No. Yeah. That. Thank you, Chance, for putting all of this together so cleanly. No too. No problem, Rick. <laughs> all right. Oh, you, know, you know what? I lied. There is one change, Denise. What? You'll notice on that last page, I used to put all the select board slots in there for signatures, and because you guys normally approve it for one person to sign, I removed the other four positions and just left it as the select board chair. 
Okay, yeah. Team. And we should probably say in there, you know, on or signing on behalf of the board that way. With yeah, that's what I that's what I usually do. Yeah, that's what that's she does. Good. I just eliminated yeah. the four slots that I usually yeah. had in. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of documents from the state and everywhere just come through with that. It's just what people do. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right. So, um, did we have a motion on the floor? I can't remember now. All right, Katie's no saying no. Somebody like to make a motion to, I'll make a motion to approve the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department contract for services for FY22 and note the change of date of payments. And I would add that to, we'll authorize Denise to sign for the board. Okay, I'll sign on behalf of the board. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Are you ready to vote or do you have anything else you want to talk about? All right, Cliff. Aye. I'm an I, Rick. Aye. John. Yes. All righty. Thank you so much, Chance. Say hello to everybody for us. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you and to the and Woodbury, the, to the fire department for us. Sure. Really. Thank, we, we thank you guys as well. And uh, as soon as I get that from you, Denise, I'll get it signed and uh, sent back to you and the uh, town clerk as well. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Take care, Chance. Thanks. Hope Take you have that. a slow summer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next up is our contract with Sullivan and Powers. They've been doing our audits now for several years, so they kind of got the hang of it. Um, I note that the amount we budgeted for this audit, this fiscal year 22, auditing fiscal year 21 um, is we budgeted $15,200. So over the course of a couple of years, it's slowly gone up, but that's um, understandable. Last year it was 14,900. So it's gone up, what, 400, $300, $300 from the previous year. Are you, are you, is everybody good with the contract? It's our, it's the same one that we've had every year. And Sandra has reviewed it and says there's no changes except for the amount. And we already knew it was going to be more. All right. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve? Signing the contract for Solomon and Powers, the engagement, audit engagement letter. So moved. Okay. <clears throat> Is there a second? I'll second it. All righty. We can I ask a question? And I do yeah. do we ever do we ever put this out to bid again, you know, just to keep it competitive at all, or do we just we haven't um I think this is their third year maybe doing it, so we might want to. Mm -hmm. Relook at things, you know, next sure. year and and see, you know, where everybody is with this and if we want to. Yeah, that's uh, that's, that's a bid again. Good. Yeah, we had uh, competing bids when we first uh, contracted with them, Rick. Just so you have that historical information. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering. I was curious to see how recently that was done. Sounds like yeah. it's fairly recent. So. Yeah. Okay, I think there's the motions on the. Oh, and Ruby, I can't hold you any longer. That, um, motion, that motion included to have authorized Denise to sign on behalf of the board, as I recall. Oh, okay. Sounds good. You ready to vote? Cliff. Oh, aye. I'm an aye. Rick. Aye. And John, there you are, John. Yes. Yes. All right, and let me see what time is it. It is seven thirty-eight. We're, we're doing we're doing pretty good. Thank you guys. Um. All right. Next up, let me see. I see David, Bill. Bill's here. Yeah. And <coughs> is I, Bill? It's Barry. Or David is Barry joining us? He was supposed to. 
He was supposed to, but uh, Steve, Steve Nolan, Nolan is here from the board of WEC. I'm sorry, what? I didn't, I guess I didn't hear what you said, Mr. Nolan. Uh, I, I'm representing the board of WEC in Barry's place. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right. So talk to us about what's going on, ARPA, um, your screen? request. Could I share the screen? <clears throat> Hang on a sec. Yep. <clears throat> I got to go get my water. I'll be right back. OK, screen share is enabled. All right, go for it. All right. So it's been a while since I've met with you guys. And so this is a combination of, um, first off, the, the various people from WECA with me tonight. So we have been working together over the last couple of years. And so I'm probably gonna talk mostly about CV Fiber and then Steve and Bill can talk about the activities that WECA have been doing to support this effort. Anyway, for the, everybody knows the, um, the 20 towns in the CV Fiber district um, is 1300 miles, is 26,000 premises. And we're estimating the cost to bring fiber to every premise about $46 million. Um, the, great is, the need is great. So here's the town of Calais's conditions. There are the underserved, which we call anybody getting less than cable. And there's 539 premises in Calais. It's about 60% of all the premises in Calais. 40% have got cable. So in showing what we're trying to do, and this is, probably doesn't show up very well, this is the uh, map of Calus showing all the underserved premises, which you can see is pretty much everywhere except where cable is. And the purple line is a line that WEC and Velco are gonna be building this summer that goes from East Montpelier substation to Maple Corner substation that CV5 will be able to take advantage of to serve the premises along that route. So it's a pretty good um, arrangement with WEC, and I'll let them talk about that in a minute. Where Where is the substation in East Montpelier, David? It's near the WEC office, right, Steve? Behind the office, up on the hill. Behind the office. Yes, uh, yes, it's it's effect, It's right next, it's sort of um, 100 yards up the hill, uh, west of Route 2 from the office. So we're also, one of the things you probably already know is that, you know, if you talk to a real estate agent in, uh, in central Vermont, they always say, well, we can't sell houses where there's no broadband, high-speed broadband, but also there's a return on investment that we think is pretty significant in, um, basis for making an investment in, in fiber to the home. So we've been working on that pretty hard. So this is the list of things we've done so far. We've done feasibility study and business plan. We've um, designed a phase network build strategy to target the underserved. We received grant funds for projects in Moortown, Roxbury, Northfield, Middlesex, East Montpelier, and Callis. The first of which that we're gonna see benefit in Callis is the pole inventory. And so beginning probably in early July, you're gonna see a couple of people roaming the, the roads and the wet poles. Join the meeting. To inventory all the um, the poles so we can do the engineering. So the next step that we got a grant for was to do a high level design for the entire district. And we're hoping to get a grant to do the next detailed engineering for 300 miles, which would include all the underserved in the five towns we're talking about in the phase one project. And through the partner efforts with WEC and Velco, we're hoping to serve at least 50 premises sometime later this year to get 100, 100 megabits per second service. We're working on finding all the funds we can find, including a loan from Vita, which we hope we won't need for a few years since the interest is about 6%. And we believe that with the right situation, because right now there's a lot of people doing fiber, but we should have enough work done to start the fiber network next year and try to get all the that first phase of the underserved, including Callus, done by the end of 2022. Are you going to be able to get the materials? Well, that's the issue. Um, so there's some work. I mean, in working with EC Fiber, 
um, they have made an arrangement with a consortium to purchase all the material, you know, both fiber and equipment at a discounted rate and hopefully some preferential rates. That doesn't mean it's all gonna be available when we need it. So that's sort of the caveat in getting this thing built. Um, but we're, you know, we're gonna, do the, we're gonna do the darndest to get it done um, and um, see if that, you know, makes it through through the, um, so in terms of building the inventory, I'm building the network, we have to do the pole inventory, complete the network design. Make ready is where we get all the poles ready to attach the fiber. And so then the construction of the fiber and, the, and then the less thing is the drops from the fiber to the home. And so all those things have to happen in sequence. So here's what we, you know, in terms of um, estimated costs, this is where we came up with the 45, $46 million for the whole district. And it's I mean, like that's the whole, cost that's, per mile. That, that's all the districts in CV fiber that's the, district? That's every, that's every premises. That's not just the undisturbed. So we're planning on doing undisturbed in the first two to three years and then try to finish the rest of it in the next two years. Um, because we really, well, actually, the legislature that passed um, H360 this session requires any money be spent that we're given by the state only go to uh, the undeserved. And, and we have to reach every one where we can. And so then I broke down the callous costs, which is um, there are 896 premises, 80 miles, and it comes out to about $3.2 million to do all of callous. Um, wow. that's, that's sort of the, the local share, if we want to call it that. So our construction schedule is beginning, you know, beginning the end of this year, going into 2023. Next year, we hope to do the five towns, Calais, East Montpelier, Moortown, Middlesex, and Worcester. And then the second priority build out will build out from the core. But we will have done all the prep work for that, the rest of the towns in terms of engineering and the pole inventory. We decided that we better have the data ready and be ready to move if we can, as soon as we can. The, um, so, yep. So where would we come up with, I mean, where are we going to get the money to do this whole big thing? So right now, I mean, the state of Vermont in the, the, the legis this session of the legislature, they appropriated $150 million to go to fiber in Vermont. Uh, there are 10 CUDs. Our estimate is in over the two year period, we see money in this year and the next year we may get between eight and nine million dollars. Um, and so it'll help considerably to keep this thing moving. And then the, the governor has basically said he wants to spend $250 million of the opera money. So there could be another 100 million from that that would go to the CUDs to build this network. Um, then there's you know the additional money from, um, well, there's you know grant money that's going to the towns that, you know, we're not going to make a hard pitch for it, but you know anything that you want to. <laughs> I'll get to that slide in a minute. Yeah, you mean the ARPA funds? It's not a grant, yeah. right? It's just money. Yeah. So there's state ARPA funds, and then there are town ARPA funds, and then that the squishy county ARPA funds, which seems to have some issues right at the moment. Um, and the town money only co comes in two two bits. You get some this year and some next year. Yeah. County money, if the, the Treasury Department decides that the state of Vermont can give the county money to towns, it comes all at one time. So it's pretty complicated. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, here's a, the uh, upper stuff that, as far as I can determine from the Treasury data, um, you can see the local money that the town's going to get. And it, I guess, I don't know, it's, the, the state has set up a portal for this that you would apply for your money, but you'd only get half of it this year. Yeah. At a half next year. The county money for Calus is about 368. And then you can see below the tally that we've compiled for all the towns and CV fiber land. That's a good amount of money if we're able to get some you know, small pieces of it contribution. And since broadband is one of the items described in the legislation for spending money, We'll hope that um, you will look at us favorably. <laughs> um, Dave, 
David, is Woodbury a member of CV Fiber or another CUD? You know? Uh oh, did we lose David? Denise, just to let you know, I'm on the line too. If Woodbury yes. is part of CB Fiber. Oh, good. I don't, oh, it is. Okay. Um, I was I wondering don't, why I, they're not building out Woodbury at the same time as Callis. We're basically sister towns. It looks no. like did, did David drop off somehow? I'm not sure. I, I can't. I thought we were gonna you were gonna have us at 7:45. I'm sorry if I wasn't. Uh, yeah, it's just it's really hard to nail the times down completely, but we're glad you joined us. Yeah, I, whenever you're ready for me, I can offer some comments, but we've been working, this is Barry Bernstein, by the way, and um, we've been working pretty closely with uh, all the CUDs in our territory, which are basically three covering our 41 towns. So I don't know whether David went over what, but WEC is planning to build what they call the middle mile. We're going to put about nine, 860 miles throughout our territory for unserved on our on our poles, which we own 100 percent of. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm a Calis resident, and until two weeks ago, was president of the the co-op's board of directors. Um, so Steve Knowlton is is also joining us. He's I just asked him. He's the new president of. The board of the co-op he's been on the co-op for six years just to let you know why and bill powell was going to be joining us too who's uh i don't know if you can if, if you can remove david's screen from here so we can see each other or is that possible or is... I, I don't know that david was done going through the slides he fell off the call okay. and i think he's back he's back now oh okay yeah. you're back david yeah bad internet uh <laughs> So they, we're, we're, what our ask is, is where any amount the select board is willing to allocate is very acceptable. And then the next. Can, can you are guys, you doing, can you are give you doing us. This, are you doing the same presentation to all the other towns in CV Fibers district? We lost him again. Yeah, lost David again. I, I, think, I think the plan is for them to do the same uh, presentation to the towns. They've already been in discussions with Middlesex and, yeah. and uh, Worcester um, because um, CB Fiber's um, goal is to do 150 miles in uh, in four towns for the first project. So if I can just take over for a minute and switch, unless and when he comes back, you can ask him questions. Um, WEC has been working with Velco, that's the state transmission company, owned yeah. by owned by uh, all of the utilities. And our first, uh, one of the reliability projects for Velco is to connect all our substations this, this, uh, this year before 2021. The first on our project is to connect our East Mount Pillar substation with, our Maple, with the Maple Corner substation. So that's about 10 miles of fiber uh, that goes from East Mount Pillar to Maple Corners. Um, but a section of it will go um, through Callus um, and will enable us to be able to run fiber um, to uh, the town hall and the, and the town office building. That's okay. gonna, that's right. gonna, that's, I don't know how many people are in Callus, but on that whole line, there'll be about a hundred homes that will be, uh, that fiber, high-speed fiber will be available. <coughs> and, um, we're, what we're planning on doing is running uh, from Kent Corners on the poles that go behind the town hall over the to the town clerk's office. That's about three quarters of a mile of the line. And right now, WEC is just about ready to apply for $30 million from uh, Rural Utility Service, part of the Department of Agriculture, to build out 850 miles of line. But until we get that money, we we don't have funds that we can actually use for that. But as part of this Velcro project, if the town can um, come up with $35,000, that will allow us to run that three quarters of the mile of line and connect up both the town hall and the town clerk's office. So it goes it goes from right at the Kent Corner, um, be, behind the uh, Kent Corner Museum and 
you, you'll see you'll see the line pretty clearly behind town hall the town hall to the office. Will it go up old will it go up is that that's old west church road is it going to go up that road no that yeah. that particular that dave are you back on yeah i'm back on okay that particular line will just be uh uh, off the road, and it's going to go right along parallel to the, to the road that uh, that goes right past the town hall. That Gospel Hollow. Gospel yeah. Hollow. Excuse me, I should know that after fifty years, right? Yeah. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. So, so you're you're going on Peak and Brook Road? You going up that road? It, this particular build does not go on Peak and Brook. But the build that we're doing next year will be. Oh, okay. So this, well, is this is essentially the, the line. The, the line you're running from the East Montpelier substation to the Maple Corner or whatever you call it. Yeah, it's going to go down Lightning Ridge, uh, and then um, Old West Church, Old West, Old Church. West Ridge, and then and then cut cut it cut okay. over. Yeah, both you and I will be will be next year's uh, project. Well, so it's really excellent to hear it's about 35,000 to run fiber to our town, to town, to our two municipal buildings. I think mm -hmm. Consolidated was going to hit us for 80 grand. We were going to pay for the fiber and then they were going to rent out the fiber that we paid for. <laughs> uh, I thought that was a, a yeah. oh, boy. suspect uh, proposal. Um, anyway, so I'm so happy. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I'm so happy that WEC. And CV Fiber are working together. It is a beautiful thing. Thank well, you. Been, thank you. We, we've been working for two and a half years, all of us together, and Wexman trying to figure out what our role is. And by borrowing this money, we can we're going to be able to borrow that money over 35 years at a fairly low interest rate. So it's gonna it's gonna mean the cost of that to the CUDs is gonna be less than they could build out themselves. That's mm -hmm. that's why we're we got into it. It's a big nut for WEC, but the board's behind it. Steve and I have been working on it pretty much for two and a half years, and we're we're Great. we're pretty excited. It's we're very close. We just need to get this last this last bit, and hopefully, this Velco Callis town town clerk's office will be just the beginning of our our long haul to get everybody on. So. Yeah. This yeah, is sounds good. How fast do you need your money on that on the thirty? The 30th? well, the, 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 to be honest with you, that that particular ten mile line is going to start construction in quotes. I mean, it's uh, mid mid July, so we will really need that money uh, pretty pretty closely to that that time frame. So it's a fast turnaround. Okay, it it is. It's very fast. So um, and, and even with the money from from that. CB fiber is getting from the state. Um, we don't know that's not going to be available to after the first of July and whenever they release it. And it's got a, you know, so there's a. <laughs> okay, it's, okay. Yeah, this is a very important thing for for the town 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 of Callis and for WEC and CB fiber. So. Well, I know that we did put some money in our budget, and I'm just trying to find it. That's I think why. it was ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Yeah. Um, so David, did you have more? Oh, Scott. Hi, um, this does sound absolutely wonderful. I just wonder who's going to be the internet service provider once the fiber is there. Yeah, we've got a, David, David and I are going to do that ourselves, right? David, we got a pickup truck. Go ahead. <laughs> go, ahead go ahead, David. I'm sorry. So we're, we're drafting an RFP that should be issued on the street by the end of the month or early July. And we're going to, you know, hire an operator that's going to manage and, and build the whole thing for CV Fiber. Um, we're hoping we get some responses on this. We know that um, Deerfield Valley Fiber down in uh, southern Vermont, they actually, I believe, are close to signing an agreement with one a provider from Maine. Um, we're hoping that there's enough providers that are out there that will bid on this that we can and do it affordably. Because our main goal is to keep costs as low as we possibly can, mm -hmm. and um, serve everybody, and and not be evil, right? You will and not be evil. No, yeah, there'll be no no throttling of the of the fiber. Um, you'll get whatever you 
No, no throttling. <laughs> the words are universal, universal access at affordable rate. Yeah. And there's also going to be some federal funds for helping to subsidize low income households. So yeah. uh, that'll be important. Very and, important. Uh, and will the school then be having high speed internet? Well, some uh, some of the schools in the district already have it. They I don't you know, they I don't know if Callis the, does or not. They, they don't. They have cable. I believe they have cable. Um, but the other schools and libraries that signed on to um, the ARA money ten years ago got high speed fiber from Silvernet, which is now part of First Light. But no, not some of them didn't. Some of them don't. I think Cal. As I mentioned at the last time, I think I talked. Callis is the only town office without high-speed internet. No, I said school. In the 20 towns. No, I, I asked if the school would then be having high-speed internet. Yes, they would, okay. they would go right by the school. And is, is the school gonna receive any funding through this ARPA or some other source that you're gonna ask them? The, to, the school board for money? This, the Department of Education or the Agency of Education has got money. I'm not sure, I'm, and I know there's infrastructure money in there, whether the schools, have thought of the, the, the you know the agency has thought about dedicating some of that money to fiber. I don't know. They currently, actually, most schools currently do get subsidy for their fiber or their their internet service. Um, I forget what the program's called, but and they it's, and, the school the school will be getting money, and I believe high speed internet will be part. But it's for infrastructure or you know mechanical or you know buildings building things. So there will be money going directly to the school in, in, in 2021 after July 1st, I believe. And who's going to contact the district to see about getting some of the funding from the, from the school district if they're receiving money? You're looking at, you're looking at the person. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, have people from the town been participating with the League of Cities and Towns seminars on this? I have some. Um, I think Sandra and I are going to attend. There's some kind of a training. I think it's on Wednesday. Yeah. Just to learn anyway, more. I have, I have attended a couple yeah. training or yeah, a, I know, informational I know the, sentences. Yeah, the portal is up for towns to access their money. Um, it doesn't look like, from what I've seen in the comments, it's not that easy to do. <laughs> oh, great. I mean, it's all set up, but I'm not sure it's that easy to navigate. Did you get through all your slides, David? Yeah, I did. I had one more to say. It says, thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. So I guess, what's, I mean, you said you're going to have a draft MOU. No, that um, would be only necessary if you guys decide that you want to give us some money. Right. Right. And we have to make that decision, obviously. Right. And you'd probably like us to make that decision sooner than later, but I don't know that we can make that decision tonight. No, I don't. There's no. I mean, I wouldn't say there's an, an enormous rush. I just want to make sure we were on the docket to, to be considered. Yeah. And as you work through your process for hearing other possible uses, and you know, of course, I hope there's no others. But and, you know, whatever comes, whatever you guys want to do to help, you know, because whatever money we get, it's grants. We do. We can lower our rates, and that's sort of our main right. objective. So, David, I think that the thirty-five thousand dollars is something that is more um, urgent, important to to make the decision uh, as soon as you can. I, I just want to say that because that line is going to have to be built. Contractors are going to the contractors doing the the Velcro build out is the same one that we'll use for doing that. So it's it's extremely important that that money be. Approved. Okay, so so we we did think to put ten thousand dollars in our budget. So we have to. You're asking us to find twenty five thousand dollars. Right. I'm yeah. not sure. I mean, we're coming up to the end of the fiscal year, um, and I don't know. I guess I'd be interested to know what the board members think. I don't know how much there is currently in the technology fund. I don't think there's much in there. You it can happen money. after July. You can use money after July 1st. I don't know when you're going to get the money from the, the town money from the state. It's probably going to be after right. July Well, the, the $10,000 that we budgeted, you can't you can't use until July 1st anyways, because it's FY22. Okay. So, and we didn't know, we just happened to think to put some money in because we didn't know how much 
we had no clue how much money to put in there. So now we'd have to find $25,000 in the FY22 budget that we hadn't planned on. You know what I'm saying? How about the reserve, the, the reserve fund that's, that there's a school, you probably don't have that anymore now that you're, oh no, that's for the school. That's I'm cool. Yeah, yeah, the fund balance, yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Rick. So Denise, <laughs> it's all right. Denise, you know, I mean, you should, you know, work through your process on, on the opera funds, but that money is there now. Yeah. So you in July, in July, if you decide you can come up with the, the balance of that 35000 out of the opera money, that's great. I don't think, okay. you know, whether you do it this week or four weeks from today it's not you know not going to hurt that okay um and i guess as soon as you have a draft mou i guess i'd want our town attorney to probably review it okay i can send that tomorrow and you okay. can it'll, it'll have a blank it'll have a blank amount in <laughs> yeah hmm. right i'll just um, say because david and i still have to work this out he hasn't whether that money would go directly to WEC or to the cud and then and then to WEC. so we'll We'll just have a, have to have a little. We still have the conversation on that. So, okay. other board members, questions? Oh, this. Thanks. Uh, this it's a good presentation. Thank you. Yeah, and it's like this ARPA money is coming, sort of coming right at the right time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say one other thing, David, as a Calus resident, and he has donated so much of his time and energy and mapping skills to this project that we're very uh, lucky. We're, we're yeah. very lucky. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, David and Barry. Yeah. yeah. It's, no, no, Barry. It's been a great project. Great collaboration. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Bill, did you have any final? No, just to thank Barry and David for their respective roles. Um, you have some great value in their services to the town. Yeah. And I'll um, Judy, did you, Judy, what? Judy, I see you're tuned in. Did you have something you wanted to add to this discussion or? Uh, no, just I'm very grateful that there's going to be a little spur that goes down to the municipal office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too bad, Judy. We, yeah. we would like to get it before you, before you left. I know. <laughs> my timing is not good. <laughs> but thank you for your great work. Yeah. Well, and and I'll, I, I'll, I'll send think... a copy of the slides to you guys. Okay. Well, well, thank the, you. The good thing for Judy is her house is uh, along that spur, so. There you go. <laughs> right, uh -huh. it should be a retirement <laughs> present. Well, right. I'm sure, right. okay. I'm sure we'll you. be having further discussions and yes. invite, and probably invite you back to a yeah, future. I used to say I'm available under the drop of a hat. I'll be right there. Okay, <laughs> Thank all right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you guys. very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Good. Thank Here. you guys. Good rest of your meeting. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, I see, is Alfred really still there or did he sign out? No, oh, I'm still here. Oh, okay. Was there something more you wanted to hear about? Well, I'm a little curious about the next to last on the agenda. Oh, okay. But if, if I am not involved in that, then I don't need to be on. Um, it probably doesn't involve any discussion with you, but you're welcome to, you know, you're Welcome to stay. Well, does it affect me? Well, it will affect everybody that's a staff person. Okay. Then maybe I will stay. Okay. All right. Next up. Um, when we did the appointments for the DRB last time, I was under the impression that Barbara Whedon was still wanted to stay on the DRB but that in fact is not the case. So Dot Helling has asked that she be changed over to complete Barbara's term, which ends in 24, 24, 2024. Um, so it seemed like a reasonable request to me to just change the term. Does that make sense? Sure. And then Ann Winchester, so now we still have, so we now still have one vacant full-time member seat on the DRB and Ann Winchester has graciously offered to um, fill that seat. And it, it, it expires in 2022, but you know, we can always do a reappointment or maybe she won't want to be reappointed, who knows? 
So I would say I would make a motion to appoint or change Dot Helling's term on the DRB as a member front to 2024 and appoint Ann Winchester from changing her from an alternate to a member to fill out the term ending in 2022. I'll second that motion. Okay. Anybody have any comments on that? All what right. Was Dot Both Helling, were Dot Helling original term. Um, I I thought I re don't remember from the minutes, Katie. Do you remember what we put her in? She was appointed to a vacant term that expires in 2022. So she'll be moving to a term that expires in 2024. And Ann Winchester will be moving into the spot that Dot was in, expiring in 2022. So she'll be up for reappointment again next year. Yep. Because they're staggered. Right. Hmm. Thanks. Thanks, Katie. Okay, you ready to vote? Cliff? Yeah. Aye. I'm an I, Rick? Aye. And John? Yep. All righty then. And Katie reminded me that we had already done the reappointments to CV Fiber in April, and I forgot. So there you go. So we don't need right. to do that. And um, Katie, you wanted to do a quick website update? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, the select board had <clears throat> approved um, me to work with uh, the town clerk and the assistant town clerk um, at $20 an hour for up to $600 in order to accomplish updates that needed to happen because the um, gov office work that was done on the Calis website um, left a lot of loose ends that needed to be tied up. And, and so I'd met with Judy and Barbara and Scott and Nick joined us. And we kind of identified um, the goals from the outset, which were basically to reduce redundancy on the website and also identify where there's unneeded storage happening on the website and move that content somewhere else so that the website isn't used for that and operates faster. Um, to organize content with a user end perspective, understanding who all the people are that are using the website. And basically to have one person who could follow through on the website content management and like just have that consistency that's a little hard when you're doing a million tasks a day to remember the details of how each piece of the website works. Um, so what I've accomplished, let's, oh, Cliff, I wonder if I could do a screen share in a minute. Sure, you um, should be able, hmm. enabled. Oh, cool. Yep, you've got it. Let's see. I think this is it. So what I've accomplished first, and foremost is just to make sense of what was happening. These buttons that you're seeing at the top um, had been kind of dumped in um, and needed, needed some thoughtfulness back to it. So uh, Judy and Barbara created their ask of how they wanted the content that already existed to be reorganized and sorted so that it made sense um, by category. We hadn't previously had a zoning tab and a land records tab, which we do now. Um, and then down here, there are some buttons that were not landing us in the correct location. So they've been fixed. We have a calendar now on the home screen that correctly shows links on the date that is there, which wasn't working when they first did it. We've got public notices now on, on the front page. Very good. So um, yeah, so we, we've added, uh, well, let's see. So there were just a lot of details that, that I fixed that are kind of on the user end, which I believe will make it much more straightforward for the town clerk and the assistant town clerk to do what they want to do or for us to work together to get things done. It's, there was a lot of tidying to do, basically going back to 2000 and, well, let's see, 2010 when the website was formed, the back end needed quite a bit of um, cleaning up the way a file folder might need to be cleaned up after mm -hmm. that many years. So it makes a lot more sense and is more manageable. Um, we added an accessibility statement at the bottom of the page that clarifies for users who might be using assistive devices or seeking to understand what they should do if something is not accessible to them. Um, the town clerk reviewed this and it essentially says that we will make all efforts and here's how to let us know if there's something more that you need if you're using a web reader, for example. I went through all the pages and removed formatting that would make it unreadable for web readers so that it's more accessible. Um, 
And basically we've got a few outstanding pieces. The zoning section is a little cumbersome and we've reached out to John McCullough to, to talk with him about how we could improve the user end on that. Um, we have VPN access set up for my computer now so that um, anything that is on the website that we would like saved somewhere else um, now is saved to clerk share so that it's um, not on my local computer. And let's see, I think going forward, we've decided that there'll be a protocol that any suggestions or edits that need to happen for the website, for example, if boards or chairs need to ask for a fix be made, they could direct that to me um, or the town clerk could pass that along so that that's not on the list of tidying things that they need to do in a, just randomly out of the blue. And then of course, we'll learn with the transition to the new town clerk, what their needs are. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think this is a big project anymore. So far I've put in 21.75 hours, which is less than the, that's $435. So it's less than what the board had originally planned for. Barbara and I plan to continue to touch base and communicate about any like redundancy issues as we notice them on the website or receive feedback. So that as things are added, they're not being added in multiple locations that the website pages are speaking to each other. And um, I guess I wanted to check with the select board about one particular ask. Um, the select board has minutes going back to 2006 on the website, which is lovely, but very, very hard for anyone, including us to, to search for something. If we wanted to search for roaming horses, we don't have a way to do it. And now that I have VPN on the laptop, the town laptop, um, right. I could move, I could hand move documents, which is the only way really to do it from the website, which is the place that they're all saved electronically onto the clerk share. And then any of us could log into that remote ac accessible folder and search because now right. PDFs are searchable internally. So oh, it, it takes great. some time for the computer Yay. to think. Yeah, so I have, there's there's a little more than eight hours remaining. I, I can't anticipate how many hours exactly it would take. I think it would be far less than eight. Um, and then, and then I could show you anyone who wanted access to it could, um, could get VPN access and search it remotely too, which is kind of cool. And then we could think about doing that for any other boards. Like maybe if that only takes two hours, we could say, let's do DRB next or conservation commission or something. Yeah. I think this is this great. Is fabulous work, Katie. Thank you. Thanks. And Judy yeah. and Barbara. Um, yeah. Yes. Fabulous. Thanks. I mean, I like, I like the idea of doing what you suggested with the minutes that would be really helpful cool yeah if, if and if it runs over if we need to extend the budget a little just talk to us you know yeah, okay yeah. i i can't imagine i can't imagine it well yeah mm -hmm. perfect excellent work Thanks. thank you that's a that'll be a huge improvement have sure. you gotten much yeah. feedback from folks accessing the um, website um, there were initially there were a few people. Um, I think Judy's still on the call. There were there were a few people yep. reaching out, and we routed them to our meetings together. We were able to address them right away. Basically, it was tidying and some um, initial ideas about usability, but it wasn't extensive. I think maybe it was three or four things, and I think three of them I was just able to resolve. And then there were I think people do have opinions about how how they like how different things look, um, mm -hmm. but it's been quiet for two months now. Is, is that what you would say, Judy? I would, yeah. And, and a lot of the feedback was um, kind of ideas about photographs and things. And it's, you know, that's, uh, it, it's subjective and there's actually a lot of technical issues around choosing different photos. They have to have a certain, what? Pixar or something. I don't know what it is, but uh, it, I, I had given them many, many photographs and, and it came down to like two or three that were actually usable. So mm -hmm. that, that seems like not something to put a lot of time into if it's basically yeah. a usable, attractive, not distracting um, website. And going forward, we can change the pictures. Is that the idea? Yeah, we can, as long as, you know, we might have to um, actually, um, assign someone to create photos that have the right the right criteria that would work on the website mm -hmm. scott you had a comment i gotta say this was long overdue and we were so lucky to have the 
people working on this who did the web wash that we've needed <laughs> almost since I was involved in it early on. I'm very, very comfortable not being involved in it anymore. Thank goodness we have some people who really know what they're doing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and thank yeah. you, Scott, for your previous uh, yeah. work. We really appreciate it. Yep. To some of pieces and, for sure. Um okay. We think we got it. I think the only other thing to consider is some ongoing role for Katie um, yeah. in terms of website maintenance that's maybe a little more heightened um, mm -hmm. with a new town clerk that, that might be less time to devote to the upkeep and mm -hmm. posting mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, we had designated certain people to be the web web masters. We probably should have two. So somebody else knows yeah. how to do some of this as well. Yeah. A little redundancy. Mm -hmm. Yep. So maybe yeah, we but, um, I, Yes, I'm happy. I really appreciate I'm happy everything. To... Sorry, Judy. Go ahead. No, just going to say I was really appreciate everything you've done, Katie, and I think you've learned a lot in the process about how to how to change things, just how to maneuver the whole administrative end. I can't even imagine. Yeah. I feel I feel like if and if it's that the town clerk who who is elected likes doing this sort of thing or is is very much at ease behind the driver's seat on it, I'm happy to show what I've done to anybody and it's it's very easy to understand once someone has shown you what to do so i'm okay. happy to play a role in whatever way makes sense when that transition happens okay okay good thank yeah. you so much nice work thank you okay um do you have everything you need katie okay friends anything friends of town hall yes uh very briefly uh, because of other uh, items that came up for this agenda, um, I asked Denise if we could push out the review of the usage uh, policy until our next meeting on the 28th. Also, um, after meeting with the friends uh, last week, there were, the friends were involved in applying for this grant that uh, we had spoke to the select board about before. That took up an inordinate amount of our time and uh, consequently, uh, what got back Bernard was the uh, rental agreement and management agreement documents. So we will not be ready to meet with the board on the 21st as originally planned. Uh, what we're going to do instead is meet on the 21st, just the friends at that appointed time to hopefully uh, finalize those documents. But we will wait until the documents are finalized and ready to present to the board before we come back and ask for another date for a special meeting. And uh, okay. maybe that isn't a problem for anyone on the board. Um, we appreciate your understanding of the situation. And thank uh, you for your work you. on thank all you, that. Thank you, Cliff. Welcome, thank you. Okay, You're ready to move on? Mm -hmm. All right, salary, um, salary increases for staff. That includes, bye Scott, thank you. Thanks. That includes the road Thanks, crew, the office staff. Um, we, when we were formulating the budget for FY22, we looked at the CPI to come up with the amount of 2.1% salary increase. Um, and we need to vote to approve those that salary increase for all the employees do we so oh go ahead that's what this is about we had a i'm sorry rick you weren't involved in those discussions when we were putting the budget together but you will be next time so what what we've come to do is to look at the northeast region cpi so that's where we came up with this the 2.1 percent salary increase so, so we're looking at uh i, I mean to, okay yeah i'm 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 not up to speed on this issue at all i'd like right. to i'd like to uh this is a place i'd like to have sharon in here too with this conversation um um it yeah, may be we have I, I, I mean, I, I, I run completely blind on this right now, so I'm, I don't know how, you know, how we're, 
usually I like we, we in any kind of uh, salary increase. It's like that's how we do it. I, I mean, I've generally we have kind of a methodology that we really right, approach and that's and way. and that's what we've done over the last couple of years is look at the CPI plus a certain amount to base our salary increases on, so that we have a a methodology and a formula that we use on a regular basis instead of just picking a number out of the air. Um, yeah, oh yeah, no, I'm- yeah. All right, John, you wanted to speak? So, so maybe to fill Rick in a little bit and kind of further fill out this discussion. Uh, yes, we've been looking at the regional CPI and that's the CPI, the consumer price index. Yeah, I know what it is, yeah. That the feds established for the Northeast region and i can't remember if that includes new york or not but certainly the new york new england states um and then of course it varies from month to month somewhat it goes up a little bit it goes down a little bit it varies um, from day to day actually <laughs> yeah but but yeah, they, again. but but there's a website and they they have monthly cpi mm -hmm. indices posted uh, <laughs> and so one of our dis points of discussion and this is what sharon because Sharon was in the learning mode, she wasn't that when she started out like anybody mm -hmm. didn't really fully understand what that was all about. And then we came to the conclusion that, well, we need to have a consistent fixed point in time, right? Um, because it is so variable over the year. What do you pick the lowest? You pick the highest. Um, but I do want to point out that, yes, we're in unusual times. We're seeing all this ARPA money flowing in and we all celebrate but associated with this influx this outflow this pumping out of money from the federal treasury to all the states to for them to spend on all sorts of infrastructure projects mm -hmm. that means they hire contractors and they hire employees and they make they do design work and then they buy materials and create demand for everything you know that goes into all kinds of construction from fiber optic cable to concrete right. to wood. And what that's done is driving inflation. It's, driven the, the seat, it's created huge inflationary impacts. Yep. I, I believe this is, I just read a, an article yesterday that I believe the CPI right now for the country is like at, it's been hovering, you know, around the two percent, two point one, two point two, depending on the region. It's in it's in the low fours. That's what I've heard. Yeah, that's how it so, works me with. So that. you know, yeah. and I know that we fix a point in time. Generally, like because so we've said December every year. We're going to look at the December CPI when setting our our budget, our our line our our budget line for salaries, we based it on the December uh, right. CPI the last couple of years anyway. That's the number. I would like to, for us to, if we have any ability, given these difficult times um, for Vermonters, uh, quite frankly, there's such an influx of people here. You can't get a contractor. You can't afford building materials. Um, you can't afford, Vermonters can't afford to buy houses if they can even find a house. Um, and and I, I'm sensitive to that. And, you know, our employees live in that bath of inflation. And to the extent that we have any ability to adjust our methodology, maybe to a compromise point where we maybe go a little bit above, the, use a, a number somewhat higher than the, mm -hmm. the normal December CPI. And I know we set our budget already, but if we have the ability to bump it a little bit in that recognition that this inflationary trend is not going to go away anytime soon. Uh, there's an infrastructure bill in play and it's locked up in the Senate. I mean, the Republicans have proposed a trillion. So that's the low number. Um, so I, I don't see this getting better. I see it getting worse and we're locked in for another fiscal year at the salary well, they're at. So I just want to put that on the table. I'd, I'd like well, her to 
to some to consider varying from this a little bit, increasing it a bit above the what was it, two point one, Denise? Two point one. So here, I, I hear you, and I totally agree. We always have the ability to, if there if there's money, um, to change the amount that we want to give, even though it's in the even though we did it through the budgeting process. I would like us to maybe approve. The 2.1 tonight, because we're coming up on to the beginning of July, or we can wait and have a, a more deeper discussion um, on the 28th and perhaps get some additional CPI numbers to see where we're at currently. I, so I'd like, I would like to wait on that just for that. I mean, I need to get a better grasp on this piece. There's one thing about, you know, when we do this, because we're building a baseline, this is probably... I mean, we don't know how long this inflationary pressure is going to last. I mean, I'm hearing the Fed saying that this probably isn't a long-term thing at all. So, you know, what we do is what we do is pull. I, I hear you, John. I, I'm not. I just want to make sure. I, I know you're do, with me, Rick. I know huh? you're with me, Rick. No, I know you're not in agreement with me. No, no, no. I'm just trying to. I need to get my head around this a little bit mm -hmm. better. I, I don't want to. I. I I'm not rash about these decisions. <laughs> I don't. I don't like to run blind. So if we can, if that's possible to wait good, until. Well, we could we could wait until the 28th. Yeah. And possibly look at um, discovering some different where where we're at with the CPI now, mm -hmm. um, and get Sandra to join us for the meeting. Our treasurer, and maybe do some recalculation and see if the budget can handle a larger increase. Because I, I agree. I think that we really need to look at this issue and make sure that we're being fair to our employees, but also what the taxpayers can absorb. I mean, so this may, so this may be a one-time blip where we budgeted a certain amount, but we're going to do higher. And that budget. would depend on what the budget can afford. And that's why we would need Sandra. Right. And so Sharon might be here next time. Hopefully she will. And so there'll be a fuller board decision. Yeah, be a fuller board we discussion. All can, we all can be held responsible for whatever comes out of here. Yeah. Um, you know what I want to, I just want to, I need to get my head around this a little better. Yeah. Yes. Rick, Rick can digest more and Sandra can help us through right. her numbers. Yep. But, uh, you know, Rick, you, Rick, if you just type in consumer price index. Oh, I know what it is. I use it all the time. So, oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm well aware of what it is. So, okay. Yeah, so, just... so, we, so what I'm hearing is we may want to, what I'm hearing is we want to rethink and recalculate um, what we might give for salary increases. And I'm all in favor of doing that, doing that work. Yeah. Thank you, Denise. Yeah. I, I, that would be great if we could do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, all right. So we're not going to make any decisions tonight. I'll put this on for our next um, meeting. And it sounds like we're going to have a pretty full agenda. So I may be seeing if people can meet at six instead of seven. We may want to de de devote um, like the first hour or something to review of the town hall usage policy or to have this discussion see how kind of see how it goes yeah that's that, that's fine with me okay sounds like it'll be a busy night so yep well they all are mm -hmm. so i appreciate everybody's volunteer efforts and the time that you all spend attending meetings and reviewing documents and all those things that go along with being a volunteer <laughs> thanks 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 to Kate, Denise, you and Katie, and everybody that gets keeps them up there on the website. This is, or I mean, on our on our uh, shared site. This is helpful. Yeah. All right. Um, so we have next up personnel matters. Um, I've asked Cindy Kenneman Warren to join us because she is the consultant we used when we were working with the union. Um, there's been a petition circulating and some front porch forum postings and um, they do not necessarily contain all accurate information maybe a 
perspective of accuracy. Um, so just to give a little history because Rick wasn't on the board then and I don't wanna get into every nitty gritty detail. Um, mm -hmm. The board had started working in 2019, the summer, roughly the beginning of summer 2019, the board was taking a look at and making revisions to our personnel policy. Then in August of 2019, we received notice that the road crew um, was going to unionize. And that was also about the time we start looking at budget. So time went on, we met on many occasions with the union, the board held a lot of um, sessions reviewing uh -huh. and commenting and working with Cindy on uh, a possible contract. Um, we Then we were hit with COVID in 2020. So that affected our ability to, to meet. And we thought that we were near the end and ready to um, sign a contract. And then we were notified by the union personnel that there was a, um, that they were going to, what's the, what's the right words? They were going to decertify, decertify as a bargaining agent, the town of Callis road crew. Um, so they so can I clarify. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let me clarify. Just kind of the, put a sharper point on all this. The, the road crew, that is the employees at our highway department outside of management, Management is Alfred and to some extent Toby um, organized and with the IBEW. Um, that's the acronym for the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, believe it or not. And they have been part of a statewide effort to organize, basically unionize the various municipal road crew shops around the state, it's building a movement. So they they did the vote and the three members of the crew at the time, Jacob, Paul, and Bruce, all voted to support the union. So that's a unanimous vote. And so we moved forward. We engaged in bargaining. As Denise said, COVID got in the way. I will also note that the timing wasn't the best even prior to COVID because we were in the throes of budget development in November. I think we might have met with them in October or late September, but we were heading into budget season as anybody knows who's, who's watched what we do, follow what we do at the select board is that we get into budget development in the fall and we meet pretty much every week for long meetings until we arrive at a final budget. And then that hell has to get to, to the clerk. Judy gets all this information and, and Sandra, uh, to get to the printer so we can put all this information in our town report in time for town meeting. All that is a timing issue. And we did not have a spare moment to spend, or we had very little extra time to spend negotiating a contract. And so we kind of didn't really get into it full steam ahead until spring um, and then came COVID. But despite all those difficulties, uh, this is a first contract. It's never been a union shop before. We did arrive at, we did negotiate and we did reach an accord. We did reach a compromise uh, and we agreed on contract language. The representative of the, the road crew, the staff at the time, checking in with his staff, uh, with the road crew staff, the IBEW. And you're talking about the union staff, right John? Yeah, the IBEW representative. Uh -huh. checking in with them. Some of the staff met with us in person, uh, depending on the day we met. Um, and they reached agreement on all the language in the contract. So then it's a simple matter of the vote. And it's all the same people. Well, one road crew member went to work in another town. So we lost one of them. And so it's down to two. And then a, a new road crew member came in who did not who chose, which is their right, to not join the union. So two out of three reunion. 
And it got down to the point in time where they, they ratify, where the crew then votes. That's the union crew votes on the contract. And despite having agreed to the language, the final set of language has been reported to us that they um, could not get a, of the two people, they could not get both of them, which was necessary for the contract to be ratified. They needed a majority of the crew. So maybe they had one, maybe they had none. But at the end of the day, the contract was not ratified. In addition, it is our understanding that one of the crew left the union at the same time. So now there's only one of three um, uh, road crew members that are is a member of the union. So because of that fact, the IBEW did not have a, a majority of the crew uh, that was union. And as a result, they had to withdraw. And so they filed a petition to decertify, basically to remove themselves and remove the, to cease the unionization effort. And the contract that we worked, both sides worked so hard on, basically now is, is, is not gonna go forward. Um, and as Denise said, there have been aspersions cast and representations made both on Front Porch Forum and in a petition there are some accuracies in it, and there are many inaccuracies in it. So that's why I think we're here to discuss this at some level. Right, ahead, Cindy, Cindy, would you like to chime in at all? No, I think you've got it right so far, but happy to contribute where you think I need to. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. And I realize that, you know, all both both sides worked in good faith to get to where we were and then it sort of just kind of fell apart and that's unfortunate because i think it was a really a really well done well negotiated contract not everybody got i mean in negotiations means you don't get everything you want everybody compromises everybody gets a little something with this a little something of that that's how negotiations work um so it's unfortunate because i think the contract was good for both uh, on both parties um so the idea is that we will go we'll, the board wants to go back and revisit the contract and see how we might use some of the good things um in updating the personnel policy cindy I think you mean you want to update the board's personnel policies, not the contract. Right, right. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I just to, I just wanted to clarify as well um, some information that just some information for people to have so that they know. Um, select the, the town at the taxpayers' dollars provides. Um, some benefits that are really pretty good. They, we have um, a Blue Cross Blue Shield Gold Plan where the employee pays 10% and the town pays 90% of the premium. We also have um, HR HSA fund, which, to co which covers any deductible and other out-of-pocket expenses, including prescriptions. Um, and also at no cost to the employees, the town provides dental insurance for the employee and the employee can purchase additional coverage to cover family members, kids, spouses, things like that. We also provide um, a life and ADA insurance in the amount of $50,000. So it's a life insurance plan. And we have a short-term and long-term disability coverage. So those are some, those are some, uh, Oh, my dogs hear the, my dogs hear the loons. I can hear the loons on number ten or Nelson. Um, so those are just some benefits that I think maybe get lost in the shuffle when people are um, looking at their paychecks and how much they make an hour. We have been and periodically review. Um, and compare, and it's really hard to compare to other towns because not everybody has the same setup. So it's not apples to apples when you're looking at comparing 
other towns to Callis. Mm -hmm. And I see John had his hand up. Well, no, you're, you can keep going, Denise. But I just wanted to say more along those lines. The one of the drivers of the original unionization effort uh, was not only a, a memo. I think that was a trigger point, but there was a perception that folks were making making more in other towns, and we were underpaying folks. But you know, when you do the comparison, and Cliff put together an amazing grid of each mm -hmm. town that we, you know, we looked at the towns in our region, surrounding towns, and quite frankly, that, that's the labor market we're competing in. And yeah, there were towns that had small incremental, in, uh, high, higher wages than us, but they had less robust uh, health insurance right. and benefits. And, you know, when it, and when it all kind of sugared down, we were right in the middle, if not, and in many respects, uh, doing better by our employees than the, our surrounding towns that we had been hearing were doing better by their employees than we were. Um, and you know, the cutting to the chase, we reached an agreement. If if we had not been able to reach an agreement at the bargaining table, which we did, um, we arrived at final contract language that had to be voted on by the employees. Had we not been able to reach agreement, there's a thing called impasse, and then there's a next level of process, and you go through arbitration, um, et cetera. Um, but we reached agreement at the first level on a first contract, which is a big heavy lift. And I can assure you that the IBEW, which is a national union, a big union, which is highly experienced in these areas, they would not allowed, have allowed us, the town of Callis, to screw our employees, to uh, underpay them and provide them a lesser set of benefits than surrounding towns and not instruct those employees or encourage those employees to, to not agree to our, our terms and instead you know, assert that we are at impasse. But instead, the IBEW, working with our employees, uh, agreed with us that this was a fair first contract with uh, a balanced set of uh, salary uh, and benefits. And uh, so kind of getting back to why we're bringing this up tonight, there's been a, there have been assertions that it has been anything but that we have driven the bargaining team, I'm sorry, the union away from the bargaining table and they left town because of us. Nothing could be further from the truth that we uh, basically reached an impasse that we didn't reach agreement. That's not true. Um, we, we were quite frankly, our, at least a majority of our, our select board, I think it's pretty much across the board we're, we were very encouraged by the unionization effort and we were very supportive. And we see it as beneficial to us um, and our, our taxpayers. Um, I won't get into that, but uh, just kind of in sum, I, I think it's important that we, we do provide, lay out for those who are watching this and who might watch this recorded uh, meeting in the future that, and make clear that we, we, we were a team we were team players and we supported the unionization effort and continue to, and the union had to leave the bargaining table for reasons that were beyond our control. And also just to be clear, um, when this all, when we found out that this wasn't gonna go forward, the board talked about um, what, are we, what are we gonna do next? And I realized that um, people don't maybe understand the process the board has to go through, but we meet twice a month. We have to put items on the agenda. Sometimes things move at turbo speed, and I realize people don't necessarily understand that or really have an appreciation for all the things that are on our plate to deal with. Um, we did recently, May 24th to be exact, sent a memo to um, all of the road crew employees Give, giving them notice that we were paying them their the retroactive pay 
which was in a, went into effect on July 1st of 2020. And also we asked if we could have a meeting with them to talk about how we might move forward. Um, so the, the select board put it out there already that we would like to have a meeting with them. So just for the record, um, yeah. Cindy, did we miss anything? No, I, I think you covered it pretty well, very well. Okay. Uh, I, I'd also like to bring up, and this is not a setup folks, uh, who anybody's watching or will be watching, you know, my bringing up the concern about the CPI suddenly going up, right? Um, that contract that we had all agreed to and then was abandoned, not from our side, but from the other side, for reasons beyond our control, as I er mentioned earlier, um, that was based on a CPI at the time. And that's kind of locked in. So here, your select board, you know, I, I initiated it, but everyone else seemed like similarly concerned, brings up the fact that, you know, the CPI has skyrocketed, has doubled um, in a span of a few months. No one could have anticipated. And that would have, and that will, will have a potentially severe impact on the ability of our employees at their current wage to continue to live at the same level uh, lifestyle, um, you know, at least over a few years if that continues. So, so we are on the 28th going to discuss paying our employees, hopefully, some increment more than we actually have to. Now, in terms of the union bargaining process, we're under no obligation to do that. And had we just paid them what the CPI was at the point in time we reached agreement, um, and if they said, we, that's not fair, it went up. If, we, if it was ever challenged, we would win, hands down, because that's the standard uh, approach to arriving at wage amounts uh, and compensation. So um, and any assertion by anybody in this town, employee or otherwise, that this select board is insensitive and uncaring and does not take to heart the struggles that all our employees, including our road crew, are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. We all live in the same economy. That, that's not true. And I, I just wanna underscore that, that I found that petition and the follow-up statements by some residents that were borderline cruel and particularly if they're inaccurate. I have no problem with people being tough because that's how I, I behave. And I get a lot of criticism for that, which I can take. But when you think you're being tough and you use inaccurate information or you outright misrepresent the facts as they are, um, I got a huge problem with that. And you know, unfortunately, that's, this is the situation we find ourselves in tonight. There were some facts sprinkled in with a lot of misinformation and I, I received, and as to have another number of other select board members received phone calls by very concerned citizens, very concerned for our road crew. Not so much about the select board, concerned that our select board would be so acting in such a nefarious way. And I had to, and they were surprised because they, they would never have thought. And I had to assure them that the representations in those posted statements weren't actually in line with what actually happened. So um, yeah. thank you, Denise, for bringing this up tonight. Yeah. Well, and, up I, and, and I appreciate allowing I us did. to kind of. Um, and as John said, you know, the, some of the front porch forum postings, unfortunately, might have been made because people had inaccurate information. I did have phone calls from folks concerned. Some were sorry that. Some of the postings contained some derogatory marks against some of the select board members um, because they realized that there was probably another side to this story that wasn't being told. So here we are. 
Um, and I think Cliff, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I I agree that um, as Cindy said, I think we've pretty much covered uh, what uh, happened previously. It's unfortunate that after both sides uh, made some compromises and that we thought we had uh, reached a point where we would have a, a, an agreement going forward that that did not pan out uh, for whatever reasons. However, um, there was discussion about, you know, that both sides were working in good faith. I would hope that going forward, uh, which is what we need to focus on now, that we can continue to operate in good faith. These meetings that the select board holds are uh, open meetings. Yes, we do go into executive session, but usually that's because there's sensitive matters that need to be discussed, um, or there could be legal reasons for that as well. But anytime a decision is made, uh, even if it happens in executive session, that information is shared with the public. It is not something that's done behind a curtain and hidden out of sight. Uh, I, I welcome anyone in the community to attend the meetings, to engage directly in discussion with us, because when there is disagreements, when there is um, uncertainty around the facts of a particular situation, it is only by meeting face-to-face -face and discussing directly with others that you can achieve an understanding. Uh, everybody has a chance to speak and everyone has a chance to be heard. And I definitely want to encourage the board because as you know, my, my time on the board is soon to come to an end and this won't all be resolved by the time I have stepped down from the board. But um, I encourage the board, the community at large, the employees of the town, anyone with concerns to uh, attend these meetings and make them known. And I guarantee you, if we do that, if all of us do that and work hard at working together, that we can, res we can resolve any issue that arises and we can do it in a way that will be satisfactory to all parties. Thank you. I mean, I think we, we really try to make our meetings open to the public. We never, we never don't let some, we always let somebody have a chance to speak always. Um, so I think we, we do a good job of including the public in our meetings. Rick? I just wanted to say I'm new to the board, but I've we've discussed this since I've been on the board. I've looked at that process and I've been I've learned about it. It's been very, very fair. And it hasn't been, you know, we we care deeply about the employees. And we we felt this was I mean, I, I wasn't in on the go negotiation of this, but it was done really, really well. And it was done in good faith. I mean, I, you know, I'm kind of a fresh set of eyes and I've been on contract negotiations myself on both sides of it. I mean, this was a, you know, this, I think this was very fair and very balanced. And I agree with you that's not, you know, I, I'm actually disappointed that people go behind the backs so basically and then tell things that are untrues. You know, that that's, bothers me a lot as a board member i won't be intimidated by that you know personally that's not a not some place i'll go you know we're we're doing the best we can for people we're being fair we care deeply about employees but I'm, we're I'm not we're not going to be we're not allow, I like to allow ourselves to be muscled or anything else that's not i mean that's but my speak for myself on that but it's not uh if this if we were being in any way unfair in this or if this process had been nefarious in any way, I wouldn't, you know, I'd be saying it, I'd be right up front, but it's disappointing to see that backhanded yeah. approach. I'm, I'm not impressed. And I have to say, Cindy was instrumental in getting us to where we got to with the contract. You know, she would say, you know, that's not going to fly or let's, let's, think about this language and maybe propose something else. So she really helped the board and I'm forever grateful to her for the time um, that she spent meeting with us with COVID mm -hmm. restrictions, wearing masks. You know, it wasn't always a pleasant way to get together, um, but thank you so much, Cindy. You were very helpful. We really appreciated you and your upbeat personality, I think really mm -hmm. kept things um, in a good in a good place so we thank you for that 
Yeah, I'm one of those strange people that enjoys the negotiation process. And I can say as tough as it was, you, you it was great working with all of you on on everyone involved, the crew, um, IBEW and, and the select board. Okay, I think I think we've said enough on this topic. I hope that others in the community will watch the ORCA portion of this meeting. I think it was very helpful. I think our comments were very balanced. I hope they were balanced and that people see that there was another side to the story that they didn't know about. And we really were not at liberty to say anything until the union withdrew. All right. Thank you so much, Cindy. You're welcome. We'll Thank, you so much. Thank you, Cindy. Have a good Thanks. night. I'm sure Thank we'll you. be in touch. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks, Cindy. Take care. Thank you. You hey, too, Cliff. Cindy. Hey, so yeah. Stay in touch, Cliff. I will. <laughs> Not sure I how will. they let you get away. I have, I have to figure out an out clause for them. Yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. John, Take you wanted care. to say some, some final comments? Um, yeah, I, I, you brought up a good point um, that I, I meant to bring up. Um, while we are not bound by confidentiality uh, at this point, and not bound by confidentiality, because number one, because um, the bargaining is over and there's no longer a union. Um, we continue to honor that out of respect for our road crew. And the only reason we bring this stuff up tonight is because there was a breach of that, quite frankly, the respect um, from my perspective uh, yeah. by the postings that went on. And, you know, when it's one side doing that, we try, try to maintain confidentiality um, out of that, maintaining that respect, we then, you know, make it difficult for us to provide the counterbalancing uh, information. So uh, that's why we're bringing this up. Otherwise we would not have brought all this kind of dirty laundry out tonight. Yep. All right, so can we move on? Um, it is nine o'clock and I would like to go over, um, I haven't had a chance to get caught up on minutes um, I'd like to go over what I think we need to do for our next meeting. We're going to try to meet at six. We'll figure out whether it's usage policy or it's to talk about salaries. Um, we probably should make some more appointments. Um, there's always things that pop up at the last minute. And um, Let's see, um, I, I don't know whether I've been working with that group about the domestic animal ordinance. I don't know whether that'll be ready for the board to review on the 28th or not. Um, I worked with the group. It's currently with Jim to look at before it comes back to the group because we had a lot of questions. So that's where we're at with that. Um, so anyways, that's kind of where we stand. Is there anything else for tonight or would you like well, to adjourn? Of, I think the, you know, the Pam is interested or uh, with the Kent Hill Road uh, project. She, they've, I oh, think they're right. working on identifying some funding for that. So, and- Do you want, do you would like that on next time? I think so, yeah. Well, okay. it's tentatively anyway, I'll verify that, but I think they've, they're, they've identified the preferable grant for that. Yeah, I, so. I, she's, I read the email she sent. It sounds like, it yeah. sounds promising. Yeah, it does. So I yeah. I think it probably is timely to do that. And then I have to see where the stormwater, uh, the East Calais stormwater project yeah. Yeah. is. I, I'm not quite up on that one right now, so. And we also have to get on the agenda, um, Town Highway 7, um, they would like to have that portion of Town Highway 7 that's on Gary Schultz property discontinued. And then there may be um, a request to redesignate GAR Road as a trail. Is oh. that right, John? John, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, I've, I've been thinking about this as one select board member for 10 years. Um, and I have 
received phone calls from a number of residents who own properties or live along there, or even residents who don't live along there who utilize it, who have concerns with cars driving through there, sometimes fast. Um, a lot of times, not local folks, which is fine, but you know, folks live there and um, their, their residences are there and people are driving through there at two in the morning on the, the drunkard run um, and they're woken up. And so increasingly that's become like the swimming beach and part of that beach is the road. Um, the roadway itself, people sit on that and then they get up and move out of the way for the car to come through. A lot of that traffic, 99% of it is not to serve the local properties, build the lots on those properties or the hall, but it's someone looking to take a different route through and um, it's unnecessary. And I think it diminishes you know, the area in general. So the idea, my thinking is, and I've spoken with a number of residences, residents, um, including uh, Rowan Jacobson, who's kind of one of the point people on the Memorial Hall um, reconstruction effort um, about, it's currently designated as a class four, I believe, Denise, am I right? What? And G I no, I think G G A R road is oh. yeah, class four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It means we provide yeah. some minimum level of maintenance to ensure that it's passable by a passenger vehicle. That's kind of the <clears throat> standard and stat. Um if if the select board were to redesignate that um this trail, we then have a broad range of authority in terms of what can and cannot happen on a trail. There are some trails in town we might want to say, you know, you can do everything but automobiles. There are other trails and maybe going through a sensitive wildlife area where you don't want any uh, motor motorized vehicles at all, or you don't want any traffic, even foot traffic in mud season or, you know, so we, if by designating that a trail, the property owners, including Memorial Hall, um, maintain a grandfathered right to their historic uses of that road, i.e. accessing their property, you know, um, as they do now. Um, the Memorial Hall could continue to have weddings, that's a historic use, and other community events, uh, renting a hall out, um, that would be maintained. And then we could then restrict, and this is my what I would propose, um, the road from motor vehicle traffic. Um, and so, so that would make it, and, and my, of course my little vision, I told this to Denise on the phone is, wouldn't it be nice if that dirt road, which erodes into our ponds that we're trying to eliminate erosion from wherever we can, we could seed that it's already got a gravel base. We could seed that and we could turn it to grass. It would still allow for the passage of vehicles, but it would now be a, a, a nice grassed area that more like a park lane mm -hmm. um, that would be provide a better quality, better quality experience for all the users of the lake. And hopefully the camp owners would agree. So that is my thinking. Um, of it's course, great, it, it's a great vision. I like your vision. Yeah. Yes. All right. So if there's nothing else, um, can I? The I see of the lamp on there, the revised lamp on that. Is that uh, say what? Say what? It say looks what? like the LHMP. The it looks like we've got that on for the next meeting agenda. That would be. We need to adopt that um, on July 26. I thought we adopted it at the last meeting, but this is a revised version. Is that? Yes. What we did at the other meeting was we reviewed the proposed changes to the LHMP. Then the select okay. board has to adopt it. Um, I mean, if it's ready, we could adopt it sooner than the 26th, but that's the deadline to okay. adopt it. I misunderstood. I was thinking we adopted that. No. Because we, we, we do want to stay on top of that. Yeah, we do. Because that, that affects our 
possibility to get FEMA money if we have some kind of a disaster. Yeah, and we're looking at a heightened hurricane season already. So yeah, <laughs> that's uh... all right. Is if there's nothing else, would it, you like to adjourn? Katie had her hand up for a minute. Oh, there. I'm Did sorry. You get Katie. your question answered, Katie. I just wanted to make sure that as you guys are planning the agenda, that there was a couple of questions around the town's policy after the governor's lifting of COVID-19 restrictions yeah. and inviting the town treasurer around that CPI discussion and the Kent Hill Road funding. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. All, All right. right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Well, I guess we can't adjourn. Nobody's going to second. Oh, John seconded it. <laughs> Ruby, Ruby seconded it. She's sick of me sitting in this chair all day long. All right, let's take a vote. Cliff? Aye. Um, I'm an aye. Rick? Aye. And John? Yes. All right, thank you so much. We did, we got a lot done. Thank you so much, everyone, for your due diligence. You, thank you, Denise. And every, right. Thank everybody. you, Katie. Katie, Thank you, Katie. Yeah. Yay, Katie. Oh, Great job on that. I, I feel bad that Thank you. I feel bad. you guys have so many minutes to do. I was like, are, are there two or three unlucky board members who want to have a 20 minute meeting and get through them or we'll do them at the next meeting, you think? Um, I hope we can get through them at the next meeting. Some I reviewed, okay. some I need to review. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, more fun next time. Yeah, stay Thanks. tuned. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, night, John. Bye. Night.